Now I, I know a guy, I know, know a guy, and uh, this guy, uh, hypothetically not me, but this guy, he uh, uh, leased a ton of space, and then the landlord, arbor, the, arbor, the landlord just said, um, and hey, by the way, we know we used to give you free parking, but yeah. now you need to start paying for parking. We've changed our mind. Yeah. And, and, and the, 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 the tenant on paper says, well, this is not what you agreed to. Yeah. But it really comes down to who has the bigger wallet and who can sue who, right? Right. So in that situation, this person had to start paying $7,000 a month for parking that they never agreed to pay because the landlord changed their mind. Right. Uh, another person I know, they used to have a, a restaurant, mm -hmm. and the landlord said, we will definitely pay for any repairs related to the roof and related to the building, the ventilation, whatever. Well, uh, just a couple months into moving in, the ventilation system goes out. Landlord says, I'm not going to pay. Yeah. You can't make me, whatever. Yeah. Um, but in both situations, both people discovered a little bit of sketchiness with the landlord between the time they first found the property yep. and when they leased it. And I, and I know that I've done this in my career before as well. Um, it's always better if you just don't see eye to eye with the landlord philosophically, functionally. If you just don't like them, you got to move on. You got to move on because it's going to cause you headaches. They're going to ask for references uh, for you. And I would suggest, even if you're a new business and you've got you've got the money to pay the lease, you're ready to go, and you're ready to sign a lease, and you think this is great, but go ahead and get references on them. And don't necessarily ask them for their references, but ask around, maybe some neighbors or some people, maybe that people that have leased there before. Maybe the most likely that landlord owns multiple properties. Mm. And find out about them. If you don't know them or you don't uh, you don't know their reputation, mm. do a little research and figure it out because there are, uh, not to scare you, but there are lots of situations like this where the landlords say, well, I, you know, this doesn't work for me anymore. Well, I've got a five-year lease here and I, I'm going to sue you. Well, go ahead and sue me. That happens <laughs> quite a bit and you end up going, it's not worth it for me to sue them. What do I do here? And so, um, you know, you're going to have issues, but do some research even when you're moving into a space. One of the things about the real estate I've discovered too is that, I mean, I, I went into business being naive, believe that if the if the law says this, then this is what'll happen. I'm telling you, you can get a contract all you want, but if you don't trust that person, it doesn't matter. I'll give you two other examples that have happened. I know that one particular landlord that uh, I had had to work with. You Google the guy's name. I should have done it before, and you find out that he is going to jail for fraud. Yeah. And I, had I had known that, had I had used Google, um, would have discovered that before entering into some kind of engagement. Yeah. And that, I mean, those are things that we should all do. We should do our due diligence on them, like what you said. Yeah. And the property management company as well, if there's a property management company working for uh, the landlord, figure out what, are, what even just if they're, a, just because they're a, a big company doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work, work out well, but just do some research, figure out who are these people that are behind this, who's the property manager, meet with the property manager that you're going to be dealing with on a regular mm. basis. This is, happens a lot where the broker helps you out, the landlord, they do the deal and then they pass you off to a property manager who you've never met and you don't know. It's nice to ask up front, hey, who's the property manager on this? On this the owner might say, it's just me and that, that can work. Um, but most of the time it's, a, it's another company and you would want to meet with them before you sign a lease. And another example, I'm just trying to give you some examples that'll save you some heartache later. The other example that I can think of is recently I worked with a guy who he insisted that he had called and done references on the landlord. And when we talk about this, like what you said, it's not like you have to be a sleuth. Right. Just call the people who lease space in the building. Yeah. So I called, boop, 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 boop. Hey, I was curious, do you enjoy leasing from this guy? Uh, no, he's very difficult to work with, never comes out and does the landscaping. If something is a problem, he never fixes it, constantly raising our rates, no. Mm -hmm. Next person I call, boop, 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 boop. Would you work with this person? No, I would never work with this person again. I'm stuck in this lease. Boop, 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 boop. Well, I don't want to get in trouble, but no. And you hear that. Yeah. And I go to the guy and I say, guy, we do not want to be here. And he says, no, those people are just upset. I will tell you that I have a great relationship right now with my landlord, and I've had great relationships with other landlords. And I can tell you, it's not like a landlord and tenant have to just fight. Right. If there's a friction, it's usually because it's based on something. So yeah. just do your due diligence and do some, you know, apply some wisdom here. Yeah. But you really need to check.